Hi guys, welcome back to lesson two. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to record an acoustic guitar. Just before we do that, following on from the last lesson, we're just going to save our project. So make sure you go to file at the top left, save as, and just call it something appropriate. It should already be in the right folder, but just check that up here. Name it and press save. And I think our snare is slightly too loud in comparison with the kick drum. So we're gonna open up Groove Agent, which is this little icon here, the sort of piano keys. Click that, make sure you're on instrument mode and click on snare, which is D1. And then make sure you're on the main tab over here. And I'm just gonna reduce the volume ever so slightly. We can play that back. Maybe just one and a half dB, so not much, just a little bit. Okay, so let's have a look at recording an instrument. We need to go to our inputs, which is up here, and studio, and audio connections, and you can see the shortcut is F4. If you just wanna press F4, that's absolutely fine. So this is the audio connections window. The main tabs we wanna be looking at at the moment is just inputs and outputs. So make sure at the moment you're on inputs. And if you've got your sound card or interface installed correctly, i.e. you've installed any drivers that came with it, then this should already be set up for you really. Just in case you haven't got it set up, you can always Google the make and model of your sound interface and then put drivers at the end of the search term and just go to the appropriate page and download those drivers. But Cubase is pretty good at getting this right first time. I've normally got Steinberg here because I use the UR22 and it should say Steinberg UR22 input left and this one input right. It's just that I'm using voice meter to record this tutorial. So just make sure that your sound interface is here. So left goes for input one, right goes for input two. And on your outputs, this should be almost the same. It's just that it will say outputs instead of inputs. Make sure they're all connected, otherwise you won't get any sound. If for any reason this is not set up correctly, you can always delete what's here already. So you can right click and remove the bus and add a new one here, add bus. So you can add a stereo bus with a left and right configuration, or you can add a mono bus. If you're just recording a vocalist or a guitar with one mic, you can add a mono bus and then give the bus a name and add bus. So let's get this out of the way. We can just move the height here or change the heights just by grabbing the bottom of that. So let's get that up there. And what we're gonna do is add a new mono track because I'm only gonna use one microphone to record my guitar. You can use two, but we're gonna keep this simple and use one. So you can press plus or you can right click here and add audio track. So just make sure your input is set correctly. So if you're plugged into input one on your sound device, then choose input one. We're only recording one mic, so I'm gonna make sure it's mono. Stereo out is fine, that's where it's going afterwards. And let's name this as acoustic guitar. And add track. So we're almost ready to record now, let's just have a look at where you might wanna place the microphone. So as you can see here, I recommend, if you've only got one mic, to have it about 12 inches away, pointing at the 12th fret, slightly towards the hole. I would avoid pointing the microphone at the hole, which is what a lot of beginners do, because it just becomes quite boomy. The actual sound on a guitar resonates through all of the wood, the whole structure, but there's various places, as you can see here, where the sound has different characteristics. But pointing it towards the 12th fret is a good place to start, roughly 10 to 12 inches away. You can use a two mic setup also shown here, the benefit of which you get a lower frequency response if you aim it at the left side or the sort of bigger part of the guitar. And you can mix that in with the nice mid to highs on the 12th fret. You can also do funky things like changing the reverb on the left and it's different to what's going on the right to get a nice sort of stereo effect. But with a two microphone setup, also comes with phasing issues as well. So let's just keep this simple. We'll use one mic. And if you do want more details about two mic setups and a lot more information about setting up and recording guitars, then you can check out these courses here on the website borntoproduce.com. 
So also what's very important is if you've got a condenser mic as opposed to a dynamic mic, then you're going to need phantom power because condenser mics need powering. So usually on a sound interface, there is a phantom power button and it's labeled as plus 48 volts. It's either on the front or the back, but in some cases, if you've got a really good sound card with a software version of all the settings, then the button may be on the software. So once you've got your mic in the right position and you've had a bit of a practice, now it's time to get the right gain settings. So increasing the gain as shown here. So at your loudest point of playing, we don't want to be clipping. If you clip on the way in, i.e. go over digital zero, there's no going back. There's nothing you can do about it. The recording is ruined. So it's better to turn it down and have 10 dBs, let's say, of headroom at the loudest point. So start playing and adjust the gain until at the loudest point of where you play is about minus 10, minus 12 dBs. That way you've got a safety net in case you play a little bit too loud at some point. So to be able to hear your guitar, first of all, you need this button down here, record enable. You need that on red, not white. And to actually hear it coming through, you need to click monitor as well, which is this orange loudspeaker. Once you've recorded it and you want to play back and listen to what you've recorded, you need to take monitor off. You can add inserts, so like reverb or compression, that kind of thing, or a virtual amplifier to change the sound, but it won't get recorded, which is okay because it means you can change all those things later on. It will still record the dry signal coming in. So any effects you put on here, for example, putting reverb on for a singer, it won't get recorded with reverb on it. We can add all those nice effects later on in the mixing stage. So what I suggest you do when recording guitars or vocalists is to set up a loop like this. So if yours isn't set up, just draw one in, come up to the top timeline and wait till Cubase has the pen tool or draw tool and draw it in. Make sure your snap is on to make that easier for you. And if you want it to snap to the bar, you can always change your settings up here bar which means you can only snap it to each bar as opposed to individual segments that's up to you but if you leave it on adapt to zoom it means that whenever you zoom in and out it will adjust the grid snapping accordingly so that's really really useful so the reason why i have it on loop is that you can record several takes of your guitar and it will loop around at the end of the loop and you can record another take and then another take and then another take, and we can then sort of splice together the best bits. If you want to count in to help you know when to start, you can always put the metronome on down here, and as I said before, adjust the settings with the E button, depending on how many bars you want as a count in. And down the bottom here, you have some different recording modes you can select if you want to. Just click on these. But I really don't recommend you change anything. Everything is set up as default and it's set up in the best way. So you wanna keep your history when you create new takes. You don't really wanna be changing any of these because it will start deleting some of the takes and it's always best to keep all of your takes. But there are different options and also one more further option across the white circle, common recording modes. Again, leave it as it is, but if you do ever get more advanced in the future, you can change these and you can set up left and right punch in positions and stuff like that and we'll go through these in more detail in the follow-up course to this and if at any point in the tutorial guys where you think i don't want to record an acoustic guitar or i don't want to record an electric guitar and i just want to bring in the audio that i've done then literally just go to your file browser and go to the downloaded work folder and for example just pull in whatever it is you want so if it's acoustic guitar or guitar riff or comped vocals Literally just drag and drop the audio in like that, okay? That's all you need to do. All the audio that we record and mix in this tutorial will be in there. Okay, so I now need to flip over to my Steinberg inputs just so I can get a recording going. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so just to let you know, I've switched over to my Steinberg inputs. You don't need to do this. It's only because I'm recording this tutorial and I've separated my inputs into two mono channels. Mono input one and mono input two. It's only because I've got a voice on input one and a guitar on input two. You won't need to do this. So let's get some levels on the guitar. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'm happy with my guitar levels. Now it's time to extend this section to eight bars. So just highlight the top half of the window by clicking on it. Zoom out, make my loop to bar nine. So one to nine is eight bars. And I'm just going to duplicate these drums over. Press Control D with the segment highlighted to duplicate over. And now we have an eight bar section that we can record the guitar on. Okay, so back to highlighting the guitar track. Enable on, monitor on. I'm going to hit record down here. My metronome will give me a two bar counting. And yeah, we'll just record a few different takes on loop record. Please do follow along if you want to. You don't have to, of course. But if you wish to record the same guitar parts as me or something similar, then please do. I'll put the chords on the screen right now and you can record along with me if you wish. Or you can just make your own song. It's entirely up to you. OK, let's record the guitar. Okay guys, so that's some um, takes recorded, four takes there. Let's just make this a bit bigger. And you can see some cross hatching here, which means that we've got audio layers stacked on one another. So if I was to move this over, this is take four, and underneath that is take two and take one. And we're gonna try and find the best parts of each take to find, you know, to make one really good take. So let's just undo that move by Control Z. And you can see here at the bottom, there's a little triangle. So if you click that, you can see all the takes here as well. So if you want to listen to take one, for example, you just click on take one and press play. Just make sure you've taken your monitor off, by the way. So make sure that loudspeaker is not on. So let's just say, for example, you wanted to cut out that bit there on take one. Get your scissor tool. Just put in a slice there, put in a slice there, go back to your normal tool. By the way, a quick way to go back to your normal tool when you're on any of the other tools is just to right click and let go. Okay, so I'm now on the normal selection tool. And let's go, let's say to another take, take two, let's say we wanted this first bar only. I could delete take two, that bit there, or just undo that. I will change this section here, bars two, three, and four, to take three, for example. So you've got take two here, take three here, take one here, and take one here as well. So you basically chopping together the best parts. Now, later on in this course, I'm going to show you a much, much better way of doing this. I'm just trying to keep things simple at the moment for these first few lessons. So when we get into comping all the best bits together of the vocals and the guitars, and by the way, comping just means, yeah, exactly that, getting the best parts of each recording and making one super duper recording. This is a very, very basic way of doing it, what I'm showing you here, but we'll be getting into a lot more detail later on in the course. If you are gonna chop audio up, then it's always best to have this button pressed up here, snap to zero crossing. It just means that Cubase will look for a point where the waveform goes past the zero and it will make sure that you slice on that point. Try not to get into too much theory here. It just means there'll be no digital clicks or pops if you've got that button pressed, if you're slicing up audio. You can also change the volume of each individual segment that you've cut up just by using this top uh, button here, clicking and dragging up and down. As you can see, this section here is slightly louder. And yeah, so we won't be processing this guitar yet. I mean, you don't just record your guitar. You have to compress it. You have to EQ it. Then you can make it sound nice with reverb and saturation and all sorts of stuff. This will be covered later on in the mixing lessons. But for now, I just want to show you how to record things. But stay tuned uh, if you're following along because in the next lesson we're going to be recording an electric guitar and I hope you're enjoying the course so far. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.